Hello, and welcome to today's webinar, Six Important Travel Trends in 2022. Over the course of this presentation, you'll learn more about modern traveler behavior, as well as tools you can use to be more prepared for these changing expectations. But first, a little about me. My name is Gavin Wadsworth, and I am a hospitality researcher and content writer at ResNexus. I have a degree in digital cinema, and I'm very excited to share these travel insights with you today. One interesting thing that not a lot of people know about me is that I worked on a commercial fishing boat in Alaska when I was a teen. Uh, that meant I was on this fishing boat for essentially three months straight at a time, with not a lot to do in between catching salmon. Uh, I always kind of point to this as my first real character building experience. I really love Alaska, and I'd love an excuse to go again sometime, and it's definitely kindled a desire to visit new places and see the world. So here's a quick outline of the trends we'll be going over today. We're going to go over post-pandemic travel behavior, emphasis on unique experiences, growing interest in sustainability, the rise of personal wellness trips, traveler preference for flexibility, and trust as the new currency. So going into the first travel trend, we're going to be talking about post-pandemic travel behavior. So people are calling this post-pandemic, but the numbers don't yet agree with that, as the virus continues to be a global issue. Regardless, much of the world is moving on, and travel is coming back in a major way. Many have come to the conclusion that the coronavirus is unlikely to be erased, but rather will continue to be managed as time goes on. After being cooped up in their homes for so long, people have a renewed drive to see and experience the world. But that doesn't mean everything is back to the way it was. COVID changed a lot of things not the least of which is travel. So here's an interesting stat. The MasterCard Economics Institute estimates 1.5 billion more passengers will globally will fly in 2022 over the last year. And here's that information right here. It also demonstrates the rise of leisure and business flights. So flights are finally back up to pre-pandemic levels, even higher in most cases. In May, leisure flights were up by 33% over the same time in 2019 and business flights were up by 21%. So as we can see, travel is definitely coming back in both the leisure and business sectors. So to speak to international travel and the trends going along with that, um, properties that attract a lot of those international travelers, it's important to keep in mind the demographics you're looking at, as it skews very much toward the younger generations. Uh, nearly half of millennials and Gen Z say they're likely to travel internationally. So that's, that means young people going on adventures around the world, looking for social media-worthy experiences and personal wellness. So consider what the younger generations value and see what comes to mind. See how you can appeal to those demographics. And here's that broken out into more specifics. 47% uh, of Gen Z say they're likely to travel internationally, 49% of millennials, 34% of Gen X, and 20% of baby boomers. So as you can see, it drops off really quickly the older you get into the older generations. Um, and these stats also incorporate international travel globally, not just from the U.S. So this includes things like U.K. travelers coming to the States. Uh, in fact, uh, from the same study, the top five countries for international travel are the U.K., France, Canada, Australia, and Germany. Um, I noticed they're all very, very big English-speaking countries. And uh, so international travel isn't just for the big tourist cities either. Uh, lots of travelers are actually looking for lesser known and smaller destinations. We are seeing a rise, in fact, of European travel agencies looking to tap into this demographic. Uh, these are traditional travel agencies that plan unique experience trips for international travelers. They avoid the busy tourist traps and instead focus on bed and breakfasts, glamping, and other kinds of unique stays. One such example uh, is a travel agency called Little America, which is focused entirely on planning trips for Europeans to visit more rural areas of, of the U.S. and Canada. Uh, and they're looking for, this is on their website, they're looking for unique, small-scale accommodations and experiences hosted by the locals who want to share their side of the world. So even if you run a bed and breakfast that's a ways off the beaten path, there's still a big market out there for you. Another major component of post-pandemic travel behavior is an increased desire for cleanliness and safety. So here's some interesting stats. 62% of people diligently follow COVID-19 guidelines when they travel and 54% pick a destination known for strong COVID-19 safety protocols. 
Uh, so that means the majority of travelers remain concerned about this and have a preference for properties that advertise their cleanliness procedures. So even if it's not about COVID and safety and things like that, people also just appreciate a clean room. So if you can emphasize your existing sanitation and cleaning policies, you can't really go wrong. Uh, before, you might not have bothered to mention that your crews performed nightly cleanings, but today it's more important to say so explicitly. So even just mentioning your existing procedures, like that's going to go a long way. Uh, and that'd be an excellent thing to let potential guests know about on your website and marketing. And then another major impact we're seeing that affects the travel industry is the supply chain issues regarding fuel. So the impact of the COVID-19 pandemic affected virtually every industry in major ways, especially anything having to do with transportation. Uh, all of a sudden, people weren't using vehicles as much. The gas and oil companies quickly had too much product that they couldn't get rid of, and they didn't have the capability to keep harvesting more oil. Unfortunately, restarting the extraction and supply chain for oil is taking longer than it is for transportation to normalize. So that's why we're seeing this increase in gas prices, one of the reasons. Uh, and it's not just the US either. Gas prices remain high around the world due to these supply chain issues. Um, but there are a number of other factors at work as well, like things like government policies, the Russia-Ukraine conflict, and more things like that all contribute to this rise in gas prices. And the result is that people are maybe a little more hesitant, hesitant to travel. So how does this affect the hospitality industry? So, well, gas price concerns are now rivaling or even exceeding COVID concerns when it comes to travel plans. So 60% of RV campers say rising gas prices will affect their plans. And 24% of respondents said they would camp closer to home. So following that, there was 19.7% uh, of campers said they will camp the same number of nights, but drive to fewer total destinations or do less sightseeing around wh where they camp. Uh, and still others plan to camp less this year. 10% uh, slightly less and 6.9% a lot less camping. So that might all sound kind of dismal, but remember, all that being said, there's still plenty of people who will take to the campgrounds come hell or high water. Um, some of them might even travel further afield and stay longer, rather than make lots of smaller trips. And as the world continues to normalize, gas prices will continue to fluctuate up and down. So nothing's really going to last forever, like things will change. All right, so a major part of this webinar is we wanna go over not only the trends themselves, but also some tools you can apply to be more prepared for these trends. So for post-pandemic travel behavior, we have a couple of tools here for you to use. The first one we wanna go over is contactless check-in. So this is a great way to add satisfaction. Um, not only are these an excellent safety measure to reduce physical touch points at your property, but they're also a major convenience factor. If there's one thing innovations and technologies are working to reduce, it's lines and wait times. And this is a great way to, to facilitate that. So, And this is becoming more standard in the hospitality space, where before it was simply another emerging technology, people have become accustomed to the convenience of contactless check-ins. And some might even expect it. Even if not all your guests want to use contactless check-in, providing them with the choice is a great way to improve satisfaction. The second tool for this trend is Wi-Fi door locks. So this goes along with contactless check-ins. Again, this is a major convenience factor. Uh, with Wi-Fi door locks, your guests can simply scan a QR code when they arrive with the contactless check-in and receive their door lock code, or even use their phone as their room key in some cases. And that's something that people are becoming more accustomed to as becoming a more common technology. And it's a little bit easier than having to, to keep track of your room key all the time. And then the last tool is marketing channels, such as Little America, which I mentioned. You may have a wider market and audience than you realize, especially if you're looking to expand your horizons to international travelers. If you can appeal to those English-speaking European travelers who might be looking for something just like your property, you might want to consider going through a travel agency like Little America. All right, so now let's go over the second travel trend. This one is the emphasis on unique experiences. And this is gonna be one that you're gonna see echoes of throughout the rest of the presentation as well. So more and more, travelers are seeking new and unique experiences instead of cookie cutter stays. Yurts, glamping, tiny homes, things to do and memories to make. So let's now actually hear from Ewan McGregor with Expedia on the subject. Stuff, we love stuff. And there's some really great stuff out there. 
But I doubt that any of us will look back on our lives and think, I wish I'd gotten a slightly sportier SUV, bought an even thinner TV, or I found a trendier scent. I wish I'd discovered a crunchier chip, found a lighter light beer, or had an even smarter smartphone. Do you think any of us will look back in our lives and regret the things we didn't buy? Or the places we didn't go? All right, thank you very much, Ewan McGregor and Expedia. Um, so what that really shows us is that Expedia marketing is tapping into this traveler's desire for experiences over stuff. And it's not just Expedia either. Booking.com has an entire category for experiences that they call attractions. So here's the Airbnb experiences page showing local attractions near my location. People have been clamoring for better travel experiences for a long time, and the OTAs are taking notice. So this stat comes from MasterCard Economics Institute Trends and Transitions Report from 2022. A 34% increase in tourism spending on experiences. And furthermore, spending on experiences has been outpacing spending on things since July 2021. So people are spending more and more of their time and money on, for their vacations on things to do rather than things to buy. So... Because of this new interest and this rising interest in seeking new and unique experiences, um, what can you do to appeal to that? How can you facilitate that? So our last webinar, Learn, Serve, and Grow with Your Guests, is actually an excellent resource for this, and I recommend watching it to get the full experience. But the basic idea is that there are three opportunity zones to provide a meaningful and memorable stay for your guests. And these three zones are called touch points, moments, and experiences. So touch points are anything that hits your five senses. That could be the paint color on the walls, the smell of clean sheets and fresh cookies, the view out the window, the texture of the carpet, so on. And these tiny elements build together to enhance an overall experience. This is an area where creativity can go a long way. Think about your, some of your earliest memories. A lot of them are probably surrounding textures, colors, sounds, smells. Think about when you smell something that reminds you of a place you went to decades ago. These things might seem small, but they can have a massive impact. Now, a moment is like a tiny experience, reading a book by the fireplace, walking into a fancy hotel room as the drapes automatically open to reveal the view, looking through old photos, stargazing. These are things you can't guarantee the guests will experience, but you can provide moment opportunities. These don't need to be long-term activities, that's why they're called moments. This helps add to the charm in subtle ways. One classic way to add moments for your guests is to give them a s'mores kit to use by the fire. That's a great moment in a package for very cheap. Also think about social media. What kinds of stories get shared more than others? It's usually unique moments. And this goes again to unique B&Bs, glamping, and yurts, and that kind of thing. Experiences are the most difficult to create, and it's largely dependent on the guest to embrace them. The thing is, if you advertise the experiences they can have when they stay with you, you'll attract people who want those kinds of experiences. And you don't have to host experiences yourself either. Advertise the beautiful hiking trails, community events, and other activities in your area. Let people know what there is to do in your neck of the woods, and they'll become interested. All right, so now we're back to our match the tools to the trend section. So what tools can you use to appeal to experiences over stuff, as Ewan McGregor said? So the first tool is marketing channels. List the experiences at or near your property on your website, as well as on your other marketing channels. If people are willing to pay for experiences more than things, you could be turning a profit off of this. And again, Little America's travel agents are focused on finding unique experiences for their clients. So go to the Airbnb, go to the booking.com and take, take a look at the kinds of uh, experiences and attraction sections that they offer and generate some ideas that way. The second tool is uh, consider the weight that social media has. Social media is great for this, for 
sharing experiences and learning about these experiences. Travel videos on TikTok are always popular. So, you know, have your guests tag your property on Instagram. You don't want to be pushy, of course, but you never know. You might have something trend worthy to share with the world. Here's an example of one of those travel TikTok videos I mentioned. Now, I didn't share the audio from that video because it's copyrighted music, but that video has 650,000 views on TikTok. Travel videos on TikTok are hugely popular. So if you can figure out how to get your property seen online in that way, that could generate a lot of interest. And our last tool for this trend is interest groups and email marketing. So if you can find the people who you know are interested in these kinds of experiences and target market them directly to let them know, that's a great way to, to generate more interest. Here's an example of how interest groups look within ResNexus. By using interest group email marketing effectively, you can more easily maintain your subscription count by selectively marketing to different groups. So that would be things like people who are fishermen, people who like surfing, people who like golf or hiking. Whenever you have an event pertaining to that interest group, you can let them know specifically. So you're not sending the same email out to everyone at once necessarily, which will help improve your subscription count if people aren't unsub unsubscribing because they're like, this doesn't apply to me. All right, so number three on our travel trend checklist for this webinar is the growing interest in sustainability. So the concept of sustainable travel is becoming more prevalent as time goes on. According to the Expedia Group Media Solutions Sustainable Travel Study, the majority of travelers view these factors as part of sustainable travel. 69% believe that lessening environmental impacts is a major part. 66 for supporting local economies. 65% for supporting local cultures and communities, and 52% for visiting lesser known destinations. So people are becoming more conscious of their environment, not just the natural environment, but also the cultural and economic environments. We feel better about supporting local businesses and visiting lesser known destinations to reduce the strain of mass tourism in popular locations. So one example I've been seeing recently a lot is Hawaii. So mass tourism post-pandemic and even pre-pandemic has been causing lots of issues in Hawaii with the locals begging people to stop coming or at least stop coming in such large numbers. Things like water shortages, food insecurity, desecration of sacred cultural sites, threats toward endangered species, and more things like that have all been rising concerns. And it can be harmful to the tourists too because of worker shortages, high traffic, overcrowded restaurants. More and more people are beginning to understand this issue, and there's a growing emphasis in thinking outside the box for travel destinations. And this also goes along with the desire to seek out unique experiences. Who on this beach is having a unique experience right now? Probably none of them, right? Like they all, They're all kind of doing the exact same thing, the same thing that millions and millions of people do every year. So people are becoming more interested in standing out and doing something that no one else has done before. So let's talk about local businesses. Many people are willing to pay a bit more for a product or service if they understand that doing so will help local businesses. So here's some stats. 57% of Americans say their main reason for shopping small is to keep money local. And just over 82% of consumers say they'd spend more to support local businesses after the pandemic. And remember, this applies just as much to hospitality as it does to retail. If your business is a small mom and pop, that can appeal to demographics who are skeptical of big brands and who are focused on sustainability and supporting local. So although it's probably not the first consideration most people make when putting together the travel plans, seeing that a property is doing their part for the environment by using renewable energy or supporting nonprofit environmental efforts might be a factor in choosing one place over another. Environmental sustainability can look like a lot of different things. Electric vehicle charging options, that's really big. Uh, campgrounds are seeing a lot more electric vehicles, which means they've had to adapt to higher energy costs. Uh, other things like opt-in services for washing towels and bedding during your stay to save in water and power. And if you have signs that communicate that to your guests, that can also go a long way, just to show that you're doing your part for the environment. For some people, that's a factor. Again, not everyone, but some people that might be uh, might give one property a leg up over another. All right, so tools for this trend, you have things like utility meters. So with electric vehicles on the rise, it would probably be good future-proofing to invest in utility meters for your property. Just like you wouldn't offer to refuel your guests' vehicles with gas for them, they shouldn't expect to be able to charge their vehicles for free because power certainly isn't. 
vehicle charging stations are cropping up everywhere, and you might soon feel like a gas station for EVs. So you might want to make sure you're tracking power usage at your property, such as with Wi-Fi utility meters, so you can charge fairly for electrical usage. Uh, another tool is for you campgrounds, consider gate lock systems to restrict access to RV hookups to those that are actually staying there to prevent people from wandering further afield and plugging in their vehicles somewhere. And finally, when it comes to shopping local and, and souvenirs and things like that, I usually prefer handcrafted products and local services over mass-produced imported knickknacks. So Resnex's sidebars allow you to offer retail items to guests directly on the booking engine. And if you can show that they have authenticity and culture to them, then guests are more likely to be interested. It's of greater value to them. Here's a great example from the Carriageway Inn in St. Augustine, Florida. When you go to check out for your reservation on the booking engine, you're first taken to this screen and introduced to some offers for local experiences. All right, now let's move on to travel trend number four, the rise of personal wellness trips. So the pandemic shutdowns not only reminded people of how much a world they're not seeing, but it also reinforced the importance of mental health and personal fulfillment. 38% are prioritizing relaxation as they plan their next trip. 36% are searching for a sense of contentment and, and mental well-being. 24% plan to spend less time on their devices to be more present. So what are personal wellness trips? Personal wellness trips, also known as wellness vacations, are trips made specifically to improve your health or fitness or to decrease stress. And this can take a variety of forms, from eating healthy, to exercise, to meditation, yoga, classes, things like that. Enjoying the beautiful outdoors is also a very common theme for wellness. And this goes back again to the concept of providing memorable experiences to your guests. Remember I said it would be an echoing theme throughout this entire presentation. If people are seeking out wellness vacations, what might they be looking for? What can you offer? What wellness activities can be found in your area that you can advertise and recommend to people to attract them to stay at your property? Things like spas, massage therapy, cooking classes, kayaking, meditative yoga, things like these might be great ideas to promote. All right, and now let's match some tools to that trend. So the key theme about this trend is finding ways to inform and market to your guests about wellness experiences during the booking process. So with that in mind, our first tool is local vendors. So this is something that's probably already in your backyard. And I'm showing the same image again from Carriageway Inn because it's a great example of this. If you haven't already, try contacting some of your local attractions and classes and things like that. They're sure to appreciate any extra business you send in their direction. And odds are you probably already know about some local things to do in your area. Uh, now to fill in the gaps, you can do a little research. You can, uh, during conversations with your guests, you can ask them, what brings you to this area? What kind of plans do you have during your stay? You can also take a look at the online travel agencies, like I mentioned, and see what kinds of experiences are popular in your area. Uh, and then plus, working with your local attractions helps enrich your community and keep the money local. So by simply advertising other great things to do in your area, you're actually adding value to your own property. And you can provide these as add-ons during the checkout process in ResNexus. So the next step after you've contacted some local businesses and got, gotten involved and want to collaborate with them and send people their direction to add more value to your own place, next you have to draw interest. So one great way to do that is to wrap them up in specials and packages. In ResNexus, you can add specials and packages to bundle services together at a discounted rate. So things like, if you stay three nights with us, you get a free spa treatment. Things like that will really go a long way to making people be more interested if they're looking for these wellness experiences. Again, the idea is to get eyes on these extra retail items and experiences to generate interest in your property and turn a bigger profit when they book. So another way to do that was a sidebars. So sidebars in the ResNexus booking engine are a great way to display these things to online shoppers. Here are some great examples from the Captain Swift Inn in Camden, Maine. So they got different packages and different things here like bubbles and berries, a birthday package, chocolates. Uh, they even have an elopement getaway with photography included. And you can also see that they have a sidebars for specials as well with various discounts available. So the Captain Swift Inn is making a really good use of these sidebars to show not only their packages and retail items, but also the specials that, that they offer. All right, now let's move on to the next traveler trend, 
Traveler Preference for Flexibility As we're already greatly aware, the pandemic forced change in a lot of areas, and one of these is the prevalence of travel flexibility. People didn't want to risk losing thousands of dollars from having to cancel all their plans due to COVID-related issues, so they just stopped booking, which kicked the travel industry into responding with increased flexibility for cancellations. Some estimates say that one in three reservations are likely to be cancelled in some travel sectors for one reason or another. That's significant. So what does travel flexibility mean? Think about it from the traveler's perspective. You're trying to make travel plans, but you're worried about this or that. What if my health condition spikes at the last minute? What if gas prices keep rising and it's not my budget? What if my friends can't come anymore and I'd be going alone? But you don't want to just not book, you just want a little more security. What you're looking for in this case is flexibility, something better than just losing your deposit and having to figure it out from there. If you as a property manager can provide options to your guests, then that's, that's doing great. If they can't stay due to a last minute family event, see if a different date would work for them. If you have flexible cancellation policies and, and strong guest communication, you're sure to impress. What they're really looking for, again, is security and flexibility. If you can communicate with your guests and let them know and work with them, then they'll be much more satisfied with the, with the service. All right, let's match the tools to the trend. So how do you handle flexibility? Well, a lot of times it can be kind of a strain on your business to try and do everything by yourself. So you can try something like worry up your bookings. So with these high cancellation rates and the traveler's preference for travel flexibility, it can be hard on your business to accommodate everything. Worry-free bookings is an excellent way to help give travelers that peace of mind and also protect your business at the same time. When a guest checks out with worry-free bookings for a 10% fee, both you and the guest can rest easy because if the guest makes a last minute cancellation within the 14 days leading up to their reservation due to injury, illness, or death, then both you and the guest get 100% of the booking total reimbursed to you, minus the 10% fee paid by the guest. This even gives you the opportunity to rebook that same reservation for someone else. And it's called the worry-free bookings double dip, and it's not a hack. It's actually one of the major benefits. Here's what worry-free bookings looks like in the booking engine for the guest. There's the flexibility they're looking for, and it's hassle-free. So just for 10% more of the booking cost, all of a sudden, they have a lot more protection, and they're able to book more confidently. So another way you can do this is with rate types. So this is an easy way to offer flexibility without breaking the bank. Um, simply offer a higher rate for flexible cancellations and a lower rate for standard cancellation policies. It's kind of like making your own version of worry-free bookings in your own pricing. You can also use rate types for a variety of other things like military and over-the-phone discounts. Remember, it's all about providing your guests with options. And now we're down to our last trend for the webinar, trust as the new currency. So studies abound talking about the growing importance of brand trust. Consumers want transparency and accountability, and trusted brands tend to generate more loyalty than others. Have you heard of deflagging? So Resnex's vice president and Forbes Business Council member Nathan Mayfield has an excellent Forbes article on the topic. Basically, some hotels are tearing down their big brand names in favor of standing out as more unique. There are lots of factors for this trend, but a lot of it comes down to the fact that travelers have a lot of trust and brand loyalty for the online travel agencies over big name hotel franchises. Things like price transparency and comprehensive reviews make people tend to use OTAs rather than hotel brand sites. And again, it comes down to loyalty. In a world where so many things are uncertain, it feels good to have a company you can rely on time and time again. If you can provide consistent, excellent hospitality and service to your guests, you're building loyalty. 82% of the U.S. say they will continue to buy a brand they trust even if another brand suddenly becomes hot and trendy. 82%, that's a vast majority. Now, a giant component of trust comes down to reviews. How many of you will make a new online purchase or book a place to stay without first at least glancing at the reviews? I certainly don't. And if I see there's only three reviews, I get real suspicious, even if they're all five star. 40% of travelers say reviews are more important today than before the pandemic. More important. And they were already pretty important, let's be honest. 
92% of travelers want to read at least one review before booking a property. I'd say that sounds about right. For me, it's more like a couple. Um, but like I said earlier, it's also about the quantity of good reviews. So here's some more interesting stats. So on Verbo, 40% of their properties have 20 or more reviews. And they generate then those properties generate more revenue than properties with fewer reviews. In fact, those properties, the ones that have 20 plus reviews, generate 69% of the revenue on Verbo. In other words, these properties with lots of reviews are making a killing. All right, so what tools can you use to leverage trust and reviews? So the first one we have is text messaging. With reviews being more important than ever, an excellent way to help guests feel more satisfied and appreciated throughout their stay is with text messaging. A major component of trust is communication. So if you can keep your guests informed about anything that might affect their visit before, during, or after the date, that's fantastic. People just want to be communicated with. That can, that can resolve so many frustrations. Plus, automated text messaging helps solicit more five-star reviews with a simple, how is your stay text, uh, after they check out. People who leave five-star responses are invited to leave a review online, while guests who are less satisfied are asked what could have, been, what could have made their stay better. All right, another tool, email marketing. So loyalty. What generates loyalty to a brand? If you think about it, it's consistency, right? If you can consistently deliver a quality product or service, that goes a long way. So if you can improve your return guest rate, that's going to help you out. Because again, it's about consistency. So things like anniversary and birthday emails. If you got an email that said, hey, happy birthday. We loved having you as a guest last year. Here's a coupon for your next day with us. So if you go back year over year and you have a great time every time and the service is always fantastic, that's generating loyalty. Here's some more examples of the kinds of marketing emails you might want to send out. Custom emails like these are eye grabbing and keeping them short and to the point can help people remain interested. Remember that you can also send these out only to select interest groups. So maybe the wine bottle email you see over there only goes out to people in your wine interest group, things like that. And the last tool for this trend is social media again. So if your guests are having a blast, it might be a good opportunity to obtain their permission to post a few pictures on social media, along with their review to show off your property and guests, show people having fun and having a good time on your property. Even if you just have a bit of signage with your social media handles on it at the front desk or somewhere else visible, that can help a lot. I know that would help, help for me, because me personally, I'm terrible at social media. I always forget to take pictures or post anything which is great for living in the moment, but sometimes I wish I had more photos of the good times I've had. So for me, those little reminders are actually great. And plus I love supporting great businesses and helping them out with social media posts and things like that. So that's something that I appreciate. And with that, we've come to the end of the webinar. Uh, please send in any questions if you have them and we'll be sure to get them answered. In the meantime, I'd like to thank you all for attending. It was my pleasure to present this webinar and I hope you all got something useful out of it. Hello, and, and thank you for attending. I'm also, as Nexus Vice President, uh, Nathan Mayfield. Um, Gavin's just uh, collecting in some questions that, that you're seeing. While we wait, I wanted to go over a couple other things for you as part of this webinar. One was, uh, our next webinar will be July 13th, uh, Wednesday at 1 p.m., and it's how to improve your pricing strategy with revenue management. We'll go over some uh, specific tools that you could use in the ResNexus system um, so that you can in, so that you can improve a revenue and also uh, you know it's it's a start of a new year start of a new season uh, a lot of you are getting ready for your busy season and um, with current trends and in inflation and other economic factors it's a really good time to take a look at your automatic yield management settings as well as minimum nights and other factors that you can use to make sure that you're not leaving money on the table and that you're being able to also uh, be fairly priced for the market. If you enjoyed this webinar or, and want to see past webinars, um, we do record every webinar that, uh, that we do. To go to it, you just go to resnexus.com under webinars and you just scroll down to the bottom and you can see, <clears throat> you can see the past webinars that we've done. Just like Gavin mentioned earlier, we had Learn, Serve, Grow with your guests, which is another great webinar if you, if you wanted to see that in the past. If you had any questions about what you saw today as, as far as some of the, the 
features and benefits that ResNexus offers, particularly word for bookings, automated text messaging, email marketing, interest groups, sidebars, and the online booking engine. There's a lot that we covered. If you're a ResNexus client, if you need any questions, you just log into the back of your system, you click on support, and you can contact your red carpet professional um, directly, and they'll, they'll answer any questions you have. And of course, um, feel free to call on our general support line. If you're not a ResNexus customer, and we'll be, and we will uh, answer any questions that you have and uh, also go over any features and provide a more in-depth demo. So again, we'll just go down to questions and answers uh, at, at this time as far as any trends or any of the features and benefits that you saw as part of ResNexus that you'd like us to answer. While, while we continue to, to wait for any questions or answers, one of the things that I would also recommend um, that Gavin went over as far as preventing cancellation rates is one of the things that ResNexus saw in, in the past, uh, you know, definitely early days of the pandemic, um, a lot of people uh, switched to vouchers. In fact, ResNexus set up a program in which we provided vouchers for all of our properties and we helped a lot of properties um, stay in business and through that rough time. If you haven't already, um, one of the things that I highly recommend is that you update your policies to have a pandemic or other emergency situation, particularly with government shutdowns that maybe are outside of your control, that instead of offering a cash refund, you'll offer them a voucher. That way that allows you to um, maintain your cash flow. This is something that the airlines switched to during this time as well and have had for a while. Um, and that way you're, allow, you're still providing a good experience for the guest, but you have pr protection for your business against an unforeseen um, global pandemic or other government shutdown that might affect your business. So if you haven't, that's another great way that you can protect your business from an unforeseen cancellation. It looks like, I'll wait a couple more seconds, but it looks like this was a pretty straightforward webinar today and that we don't have a lot of questions about further trends or other items that are going on in the market. But we hope that you enjoyed this webinar today. And like I said, I'll wait for about 30 more seconds to see if we get any questions. And if not, I'll just end the webinar. All right, thanks again for attending today's webinar, and we hope to see you for our next one about revenue management. Have a great week.